Hi, welcome back to my part one. Uh, sorry, my part two of the Edge Spy Simulating Diode. In the previous video, I already showed how to do the simulating of a diode. In this part, I will only explain the graphical meaning of the measurement and also doing another example about simulating the diode in a different case. And uh, I'm totally, uh, terribly sorry about my pronunciation of the diode in the previous video when I said it like diet, as if I was on my diet. So, so sorry if it's caused any confusion. And now let's jump to our main focus, which is explaining the measurement graphical visualization. Let's run the simulation. Nothing happened because I haven't measured anything. Let's measure the input and you could say the green line is the input voltage and the voltage on the diode, diode is the blue line. Okay, so what happens here? I already put the model of our ideal diode. So as a reminding, when you look at this graph, what does it mean? It means the if the voltage on the diode is over zero, which is impossible because as you could see, the diode, when the voltage starts to be bigger than zero, it lets infinitely big current going through it. What does it mean? It means if the voltage on the diode to be over zero volt, bigger than zero volt, then the diode can withstand whatever value of the current going in this direction. As a result, the voltage dropped on the diode when the diode conducts does not change. So, so you could see here, let's attach the first cursor to our diode. So this is when our diode starts to conduct because the input voltage is, as you could see clearly in the graph, it's bigger than zero. So the diode, when the voltage input bigger than zero, it starts to conduct because the voltage in the forward direction is bigger than zero. So what is the voltage on the diode? It's always almost zero, as you could see, nano volt, which is very small, almost zero. Oh, how can I go back? Um, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, good. So as you could see that when the diode starts to conduct, the voltage drop on the diode always zero because it can withstand whatever current going through it. Even though the input voltage varies, the current going through it varies, but the voltage on the diode always stays at zero because as you could see in the ideal model, the diode can withstand infinitely big currents going through it without changing the voltage drop on it. I could, like, let's do the measurement for the current. Okay, let's do the measurement for the current. Okay, now this is the current. Let's attach the second cursor. So as you could see, this is our current. This is the value of our current. Let's let's see the value of the current uh, here in this value. Okay, when the diode starts to conduct, the current varies. And uh, see, you could see it varies. It varies. It varies. The value of the current varies. In the current going this forward direction varies very much. The current going from top to bottom varies. And it proves the rightness, the correctness of the model, the ideal model. And when when the input voltage starts to be less than zero, as you could see in the ideal model of the diode, if the voltage on the diode starts to be less than zero volt, the diode does not let any current going through it. No current going through this brand. 
as if the diode was replaced by an open circuit. And if you have an open circuit here, whatever in the input will go at the output. So as a result, when the input voltage, the input voltage starts to be less than zero, the output voltage on the diode is the same, coincides with the input voltage as the blue line and the green lines are one. That's why you only see the blue line only because at this period, at this interval of time, the diode does not conduct no current going through it. Let's check. So the current where the diode does not conduct in this direction should be almost zero. As you could see, picroampere, which is totally zero, 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 totally zero. So I hope that the explanation of the model of an ideal diode is clear. Now let's jump to another example. Let's say we have another example here when the forward voltage on the diode or in other words when the diode starts to conduct a current going through it is at 0 0.7 volt so how could we do this okay let's just keep this model and add another model you choose here dot op in order to have a spice directive and then we type dot model and the name of our model let's say it b and this is the type D is the type of our component. Our component is a diode. That's why it's D. And then R on is zero because it's ideal. And F forward, the forward is 0 0.7. Okay, now we have another model. How can we change the model for our diode? Control, right click, and then at the value, you change to the name B. So now our diode will have the parameter of the model B. Let's run the simulation. Let's zoom in the, current, the circuit a little. Measure the input and measure our output. Now let's see, attach the cursor to our diode. Now when the diode conduct is when the voltage on it starts to be 0 0.7 the input voltage starts to be bigger than 0 0.7 okay what is this value of this point 700 millivolt which is 0 0.7 volt exactly what we expect it to be and when the diode starts to conduct the voltage on the diode does not change because the diode can withstand whatever infinitely big current going through it so whatever current value going through the diode in the forward direction the voltage drop on the diode always stays the same 0 0.7 volt and when the voltage input voltage starts to be less than 0 0.7 it means the voltage on the forward direction of the diode starts to be less than zero the diode does not conduct no current going through the diode at that point. As a result, the diode can be think of as an open circuit. So the value on the output on the diode should be the same with the input. As you could see, the blue line and the green line coincide. They are the same because at this interval of time, the diode does not conduct. So the diode is as if it was an open circuit. And uh, that's how you can interpret the graphical illustration of an ideal diode. Now let's uh, again change it to another model. Change it to model A. Okay, let's run the simulation. Pay attention. When the diode starts to conduct, the voltage on the diode at this moment is 0 0.7. If I change, which is corresponds to the model B, now I already changed the diode to the model A and see the result, run the simulation and see the result. 
attach the cursor and here you could see the voltage on the diode when the diode conducts the current is zero. It's zero. Okay. I hope that this part two is uh, clear enough about explanation of the graphical or the graph or the model of our ideal diode and how you could do simulation of a diode doing the transient analysis with the diode and if you find this, the video is helpful please give me a like or subscribe and thank you so much for watching there are more videos about edge spicer coming hope you guys will watch it in the future goodbye